My name is Bill Haney. I'm the CEO of Dragonfly Therapeutics and Skyhawk, Skyhawk Therapeutics, and I'm a filmmaker. Um, two weeks ago, we opened a movie at South by Southwest in Texas called Breakthrough that features Jim Allison, uh, who recently won the Nobel Prize in Medicine for his work in launching the field of immuno-oncology, and it's screening here tomorrow night at AACR. Well, I made this movie for a range of reasons, like folks do everything. Um, part of it was that in the polarized world that we find ourselves in, in the United States and in England, these great political divides, I wanted to find a story about a subject on which everybody could agree, and to use that as a prism to think about how we can work together to solve complicated problems, rather than just polarize and demonize. So there's nobody who's pro-cancer. North, south, east, west, red, blue. Um, we're all anti-cancer. Most of our families have been touched by cancer. It's the number one killer in the world today. Um, so finding someone, in this case Jim, who's had a revolutionary impact on this field and asking what we can learn from that, not just to celebrate him, but also to think about how we can solve complicated problems. Because for most of my childhood, solving cancer, curing cancer was a, was a throwaway joke line. It's like my mother would say, what are you late to lunch because you're curing cancer? Come on, get in here. You know, and, but in point of fact, um, for a small number of cancers, for some patients, you know, the immuno-oncology revolution has cured cancer. And so that, uh, the extraordinary personal dynamics, you know, the empathy and humor and grace and charisma and intellectual energy of Jim, um, and the wonderful team of people he collaborated with to take, you know, the first uh, uh, immuno-oncology drug, CTLA-4, from the lab to patients. That story captivated me, and so far it seems to be captivating audiences. There's always the on-camera and off-camera personal highlights. Um, the off-camera personal highlight was that Jim was born in a little tiny town in South Texas called Alice, four hours drive south of Houston near the Mexican border. Really hard scrabble, poor Texas even now and in, 19, in the 1940s, really challenging place. As part of this film, he returned to his hometown where he had not been in 40 plus years. And the, his experience of going back to his childhood as part of the film, while it's not in the story, you don't see it in the film, for me, um, watching how moving it was for him to reconnect to his childhood uh, was very touching. And then in the film itself, I think my favorite highlights are Jim playing the harmonica with Willie Nelson. Um, on stage at Austin City Limits because, you know, Jim's life has been on the one hand science and the other hand music. And he's a harp player and a blues harp player and, um, and just the sheer pleasure he gets from it is something fun to behold. It's a wonderful thing. We decided to film before Jim had won the Nobel Prize. You know, he was so clearly the progenitor of what is an extraordinary revolution in science that all of that was compelling with or without the um, accreditation of the Nobel. And actually the last day of planned filmmaking was a Sunday morning in New York and Monday morning in New York he got the phone call that he won the Nobel. Um, it had been something in the, you know, rumored and talked about for years and I think it had become kind of hard for him in a way. Every year people would say you're going to win, every year he wouldn't. And so I, um, so I was really happy for him that he won it. I, I felt it was completely justified. In a way, it justified the work of all the other people who'd been supporters of his or engaged in the field themselves or contributed to the field, many of whom I'd come to know through the film and all of whom I really treasure. So I was happy about that. Um, I have to say, you know, it clearly makes the film more likely to be seen. There are very few films about very gifted scientists, feature-length films. So you see an expositional 50-minute documentary on, from NOVA. But a film in theaters about a scientist is extremely uncommon, and I think it's partially because they're hard stories to tell, and, um, and rarely as exciting as this one. And so I think the Nobel, of course, helps us get people to come and watch it, and we're happy about that. <laughs>